the, uh, the laws of health, you realize that, my friends, the laws of health, God has given to us to even boost our immune system. Yes, you're going to see, then how does the, the laws of health help to boost our immune system in any way? So let's go to the next slide as we reveal some things about the laws of health. And just go to the next slide and just, just show all of them here today. And we have even a simple acronym called God's Plan here today, okay? And uh, also we're going to look at, let's go back, God's Plan for boosting your immune system. What is God's plan then for boosting your immune system? We're going to look at trust, trust in divine power. These, these are the laws or the principles that God has given to us. So how does trusting in God actually helps you to boost your immune system? My friends, you notice here as well that, um, that there's a relationship that exists between the mind and the body. And that relationship becomes is a very intimate relationship. And when one is affected, the other will sympathize. In other words, when your mind is affected, your body sympathizes and even vice versa. But when you look at this a little bit further here, you realize that even with dealing with the mind and even with lack of trust, it can lead to what is called stress. When you understand stress now, stress is a, is a hormone, right, uh, that can suppress uh, it's the, the, the stress hormone, sorry, not the hormone, the stress hormone can suppress, which is called a, it's called a sotoroid, can suppress the effectiveness of your immune system. In other words, it actually, it, it actually can serve in lowering the number of lymphocytes, right? Lowering the number of lymphocytes in your system. Also, stress can also have an indirect effect on the immune system as a person may use unhelpful behavioral coping strategies to reduce their stress, such as what? Drinking and even things such as smoking. So we can see that even with stress, it, even in encouraging stress in your life, in my life, my friends, it doesn't matter who you are, stress in itself, that hormone, that stress hormone can even suppress the effectiveness of your immune system. It weakens your immune system to a point where it lowers your lymphocytes and can leave you more at risk for viruses and other ailments. Also, let's look at air for instance here. Air for instance here today, okay? Let's go to air. A pop, air pop pollution can create some major health problems. Highly polluted air has been shown to cause a burning effect in eyes, nose, and throat. Polluted air also makes it hard for those with asthma to breathe. Are you following this? In just one year, the presence of trees, it saved about 850 lives and prevented about 670,000 cases of acute respiratory symptoms, according to new research that was published in the Journal of Environmental Pollution. So you realize here, my friends, that air is very vital in preserving the body system and puts you in a better condition. And that is good and even fresh air. Now, look at this here, for instance. It shows that the science shows that you really should stop uh, and smell the roses, right? And smell, the, uh, smell them and, and also helps to promote uh, relaxation when it comes to flowers such as lavender, roses, jasmine, and so forth, right? So realize that research also shows us here that spending time in fresh air, surrounded by nature, it increases your energy in 90% of people according to one research study that was conducted. In other words, you can see that the if effectiveness of fresh air and fresh oxygen coming into your nostrils, really revitalizing your system is a very vital thing. Now, my friends, don't get me wrong with what I'm going to say here, right? Um, you know, I just want to highlight this because mask wearing, we have to be very careful when it's used in a very, in a, in a way that is, uh, you know, like really almost a far stretch, like almost an extreme way. Some people are driving in their cars with a mask on, with nobody next to them, and the windows are up. Are you following this, my friends? Now, this is a very interesting situation where people are causing themselves to not be exposed to so much oxygen and so forth. Now, bear this in mind that I'm not speaking against masks or anything like that. I'm just showing you the effectiveness of if you have this thing on all the time, not allowing yourself to take in fresh air, then you can put yourself even at risk for other issues. Are you following this? So one way to solve the problem could also lead to a, another problem. Are you following this? So, you know, also, you know, keep in mind as well that, of course, wearing the mask, because I, I wear mine too when I go into certain public places and so forth like that. But if I'm in the car by myself, right, if I'm home and then nobody is there, you know what I mean, that, that has 
any issue, then it doesn't make sense at this point for me to put myself at risk for issues like this, right? We were designed to take in pure, fresh air all the time. That is God's design when you look at the original design of God. Now, when you look at it a little bit further, daily exercise now. Exercise. Exercise leads to an increase of natural killer cells, right? Neutrophils and monocytes, which ultimately increases immune function. I found this is by uh, Arthur Lee, Ali, one of the doctors here. Also from a Yale, uh, Yale Prevention uh, Center, Research Center. We can see that exercise leads to increase natural killer cells. In other words, my friends, I want to stress on this, for instance, we need to exercise. Very vital for us. I know that we have been in lockdown for so long. Many people are living a very sedentary lifestyle where we are not exposed to exercise or any activity at all. Therefore, we can put ourselves more at risk now for these issues. My friends, even in times like these, we should be exercising wherever possible, right, for us to do that. And, uh, and we should be having activity in our bodies on a regular basis to really improve and even to boost our immune system naturally, right? And this is now using God's principles, these laws of health as medicine, as remedies to help us in this vital time. Also sunlight, sunlight. The sun is the absolute best source of vitamin D. And it contributes to a powerful strengthening of your immune system when your body can naturally produce vitamin D from moderate sun exposure. And I'm sure that some of us may know this and uh, realize this by now that vitamin D and sun exposure is a very effective remedy when it comes to fighting the coronavirus. Now, when you look at this a little bit further, my friends, you're going to realize that there is a direct relationship to people with low vitamin D levels and those who actually got the coronavirus. Let me say that one more time. There's a direct relationship according to many, many studies that have come out, a lot of research showing us that there is a direct relationship with low vitamin D levels and those that actually have COVID-19. And research has even found out that those with COVID-19, most of them, a lot of them, had even low vitamin D levels. So therefore, how do you know if your vitamin D, D levels are low? You can get yourself tested, right? Get yourself tested and to actually find out what your vitamin D levels are. You want to get a specific test, right, to be able to do that, my friends, because it is very critical that we expose ourselves to sunshine as much as we can. I know that some of us live in the northern states, uh, even now, you know, the sun is a little bit out more than it used to be during the winter time. And, uh, and if not too, if you're not exposed to sunshine, then you can always supplement yourself with vi vitamin D, right, as a source to be able to contribute to powerfully strengthening your immune system. And this should not be taken lightly because there is a direct relationship when it comes to the lack of vitamin D in individual bodies. Now, all the uh, researchers report that um, exposure the sunlight appears to activate T cells. So they move more rapidly through the body. They move more rapidly through the body. So in other words, make it a habit to be able to deliberately expose yourself to the sunshine on a regular basis. And if not here, my friends, you want to be able to supplement yourself on, on vitamin D or some, um, some source of vitamin D, D3, and so forth, that's able to help you to boost those levels if those levels are very low. But on a general lifestyle practice, it's very critical for us to get the best source of vitamin D, which is from the sun that God has given to us. Another thing here, too, is proper rest. Proper rest, having the right amount of rest on a regular basis. Studies show that people who don't get sleep a quality sleep or enough sleep are more likely to get sick after being exposed to a virus such as a common cold. Wow, you mean to tell me, you mean to tell me that not getting enough sleep or even quality of sleep can put me at risk for the cold, for the flu, and even the coronavirus? You better believe, my friends, that it will put you at risk. A lack of sleep can also affect how fast you recover if you do get sick. Now, during sleep, your immune system releases protein that is called cytokine. 
okay? Now, some of which can help you to promote sleep and so forth, right? Now, certain cytokines, right, uh, cytokines, you know, it, it, it is needed to be able to increase when you have an infection or inflammation or when you're under stress. Now, sleep deprivation may decrease the production of these protective cytokines. In addition, infection-fighting antibodies and cells are reduced during the period when we don't get enough sleep. Wow. A lack of sleep can lead to poor immunity, a poor immune system that can lead to other issues that are in the air and the viruses or infections. Are you following this? A lack of sleep can, can put you more at risk for those issues. So that's the question for us here is um, how much sleep should you get on a daily basis? But it's recommended to get about seven to eight hours of sleep a day. So in other words, my friends, if you, are, uh, if you are, have a habit of sleeping late at night, then you want to be able to set some goals for yourself, okay? Um, you want to set some goals for yourself where you can, you can time and say, you know what, I'm going to go to bed at this time because I want to get the right amount of sleep, uh, quality amount of sleep that I need on an everyday basis as a protective measure against um, these issues. And not, not only COVID-19 here as well. We, can, we also have many studies linking to diabetes and even high blood pressure, where lack of sleep, when people go to bed after 10 o'clock consecutively for about two weeks, they have, the research has shown that there is a risk now. They are more at risk for heart disease and even diabetes and even high cholesterol. This is very, very vital and important. And these things may seem so simple for us here today, but it's so powerful and effective when it's used or when it's applied to our lives on an everyday basis. Lots of water. Water. Water is such a beautiful liquid, a drink that God has given to us. Now, water and even gut health and even immunity. Let me see the relationship here. 70% now when it comes to your immune system is based in the gut and even colon. Uh, and the colon health now is, is, is very critical to optimal immunity. Now, drinking enough water on a daily basis is the single most important daily habit to maintain colon health as well as optimal immunity. So, my friends, it's very critical for us, even at this point in time, to be able to affect your immune system by getting the amount of water that you need every single day. So, what does it look like? Take your body weight, okay? Take your body weight, divide your body weight by, by two, right? Divide your body weight by two. It's going to tell you the amount of water that you need in ounces, okay? So, for example, if your weight is, let's just say it is 100 and, um, let's say 120, or let's just say that it's 120, then what you want to do, you want to divide your body weight by two, which is what? Two, to 120, that's what? That's 60. In other words, 60 ounces of water is the daily goal. So how do you get the amount of cups that you need? You take eight and you divide it into that amount, and you're going to get, uh, you're going to get the amount of uh, water that you need on a daily basis. Now, even then, too, there's another formula that you can use. You can divide your body weight into 16, divide your body weight into 16, right? And it's going to tell you the amount of cups that you need, right? The amount of cups that you need. So divide your body weight by 16, one, six, and it's going to tell you the amount of cups of water that you need on a regular basis. In other words, make it a goal, make it a habit to drink enough water. We shouldn't have to go a day without drinking water. You put yourself at risk, not only for COVID-19, but also you put yourself at risk for many other issues, many other ailments, right? Many of the problems as a result of a lack of water in the body system. Also, when you look at this a little bit further, you're going to look at temperance here, for instance. Being temperate, abstemiousness, being temperate. And temperate is very, it, it, basically it is, um, you know, abstinence from that which is harmful, but even moderation in that which is good, that which is good. So even the good things we have to be temperate with. Not because something is good that we have to abuse it and use it and abuse it. Are you following this? In other words, my friends, it's very critical for us to realize the moderation in all things is a good thing. And therefore, therefore, also, temperance also means to abstain, to be abstinent from that which is harmful for us. So therefore, if something could be very detrimental to us, if something is very harmful to us, therefore we can stay away from it. 
We must abstain from it. Are you following this? Now, what can cause your immune system there to weaken as a result? Some of the things that can even impact your immune system is overdosing or overusing on sugar, alcohol, too much fat, diet, dairy, smoking, and even caffeine. These can also serve in weakening or even suppressing your immune system. Now, let's go to our next slide for a moment as we explore a few more things. Secret number two here, building your immune system, how to do that? What is the best immune building nutritional plan? I'm sure that you've been hearing that even throughout our presentations here uh, today, but also we're going to be going into some specifics as it pertains to the nutritional plan that God has given to us and how specific items in uh, on nutrition can really impact your immune system. So let's go a step further as we look at this together, okay? Um, kale. Kale and even cruciferous vegetable. Kale and even cruciferous vegetable, right? Now, even then, I got a call from a lady um, out there in uh, Pennsylvania, and she, her immune system was really poor. She, uh, her low blood cells were low, her white blood cells were low, and she wanted to know um, how, how can she really increase her white blood cell count and really boost her immune system. So what I was able to tell her was, uh, get some cruciferous vegetables. Um, I want you to eat that on a regular basis, um, like every single day. You want to get some of that into your diet every single day. And also, you want to get orange-colored fruits, right, especially citruses, tangerine, mandarin, oranges, grapefruit, right, lemons, and so forth, right, those orange color, yellowish, and so forth. So do that. Do that um, on a regular basis and let me know. So she was able to do that in a matter of uh, – about two weeks or so, she went back to the doctor to do a test, and they saw that her white blood cell count had already increased. Wow. That is amazing how these natural foods that God has provided for us can really impact our body's immune system immediately. Almost, it was a powerful to realize this even more so. So therefore, you want to be able to expose yourself to orange-colored fruits, like I mentioned before, um, even those types of vegetables as well, that could be orange in color, as well as uh, sunflower seeds and even almonds, and even prebiotic foods also. So these can also serve as a nutritional guide, so you can add more of these intentionally into your diet to really help to affect your immune system in a positive way. So let's go to our next slide as we realize this uh, together, because especially when it comes to orange-colored fruits and even vegetables, they are, they are high in what is called um, vitamin C. And both essential nutrients to support, when it comes to vitamin A, vitamin C, uh, these are both essential nutrients to help support a healthy immune system, support a healthy immune system. Now, even then, too, as well, with, um, with sunflower seeds and almonds, in addition to vitamin C, uh, vitamin A, E now, vitamin E plays a role, a key role in immunity. This fat-soluble vitamin, it boosts the activity. It boosts the activity of the immune system cell to support the, uh, the body's ability to fend off invading bacteria and even viruses. Now, an ounce of sunflower seeds or a quarter cup supplies about half of the daily recommended or recommendation target for, the, uh, for vitamin E. Now, the same size portion of almonds uh, contains about 45% of our daily goal of vitamin E. Even with prebiotic food, 70% of our immune system cells are located in the gut, and, uh, and that our gut bacteria also plays a very essential role in supporting a strong immune system. Now, some of the foods that can really affect your body, uh, even some prebiotics uh, as well, such as uh, Jerusalem artichokes can really affect that. Even with uh, onions and garlic and asparagus and leeks, bananas are also good, and even other uh, natural sources of prebiotic food. And this can really affect your body system. So you want to be able to make a list of that. Take a picture of this presentation as well, uh, because uh, you want to deliberately apply those to your diet. So that can really help, and, and that has really helped a lot of people's lives as a result. Now, even then, when it comes to nutrition, nutritional plan. Even studies have come out, and even some observational studies, too, and even some research have shown us that a plant-based diet as well has, has served in even helping to impact your immune system. And you can even Google it. Google 
a plant-based diet, COVID-19, a plant-based diet, and um, your immune system. And you'll find very interesting things about that and how it really impacts your body. And that's the foundational nutritional plan that God has given to us even in the beginning of time like we've heard before. And this is emphasized in Genesis 129 and even Genesis 318. That's the foundation of the nutritional plan that God has graciously and lovingly provided to each and every one of us to be able to affect our body, not just only for COVID-19, but even for the pre-existing conditions that can impact us as a result. Things such as um, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, um, respiratory conditions, and arthritis, and many other issues that can put us more at risk uh, if we were to contract a COVID-19, can put us more at risk for death, that is, if we were to be able to get this uh, condition or this virus. Okay, so let's go to our next slide here today as we understand the next secret we're going to be revealing today. Herbs that aid proper immune function. Herbs that aid proper immune function. Now, next slide. And so we're going to realize something here today, that some of these herbs are echinacea, garlic, elderberry, golden seal, mullein, lobelia kind, and so forth, right? Now, with that, too, you're going to realize that echinacea now, echinacea plants, they contain an, an impressive variety of active compounds, such as caffeic acid, right? And even many more. In fact, that even a review study of 14 studies found that taking echinacea may lower the risk of developing colds by more than 50% and even shorten the duration of colds by one and a half days. And that is study that was conducted. This is amazing. Remember, we learned earlier on that God has even provided for us the herbs. Are you following this? Even the herbs that God has given to us for our healing. Are you, are you following God has given to us for our healing? Therefore, my friends, you realize that echinacea can lower the risk of a cold, of even developing a cold by more than 50% and even shorten your duration of this by one and a half day. Echinacea, and you can take it in many forms. You can take it in the tea form, form. you can make a tea out of it by getting the dry herbs. Uh, you can take it in a capsule if you want to get the powdered herbs. You can even take it in, a, in an extract format, uh, an extract, an herbal extract, an herbal tincture. So there's different, there's different forms of even uh, taking in this, uh, this, this natural herb that God has provided for us. Now, garlic, garlic, I'm sure I'm sure about all of us, if not all of us, know what garlic is. Now, garlic here contains compounds that help the immune system to fight germs. And if you have any questions here at this time as well, what we're going to do is that we're going to take questions towards the, um, towards the end of the presentation. So save your questions, write it down, and we're going to address it, okay? just want to let you know that you're not, you're not being ignored. Um, we're going to be addressing your questions afterwards, okay? And so... Garlic compounds contain what is called, it helps your immune system to find germs. Now, there's a study that, that gave 146 healthy volunteers garlic supplements or even a placebo for three months, okay, for three months. The garlic group, the garlic group had a 63% lower risk of getting a cold, and their colds were 70% shorter are you are you are you hearing this this is this is outstanding information and research that we stumbled upon that 146 volunteers they would give the garlic supplement and as a result of this the garlic group they had a 63 percent lower risk of getting the cold a 63 percent lower risk of getting the cold and they called now look at this here for instance they called now were 70% shorter, 70% shorter. Yes, the same garlic you have in your kitchen right now. <laughs> That's the same garlic you put in your food today that you cooked yesterday, the same garlic that you have in your kitchen. That's the same garlic I'm talking about here today. But it's just that we have to learn how to use these things intelligently. Now, if you stay towards the end as well, I'm going to have a presentation, a demonstration, a practical demonstration of, of a remedy that, that, that you can actually use to boost your immune system naturally. And this is called the immune boosting, the immune drink. 
And you're going to look at some other remedies as well that also have garlic in it. So you can learn how to use the garlic. So in other words, my friends, be intentional in adding garlic to your diet. Some people may say, well, well, what about my breath? <laughs> well, if you have charcoal, you can just swish some charcoal in your mouth after eating garlic. It could reduce the, uh, the smell, if not eliminate a lot of it. Even, even parsley, too. You can have parsley at the end of your meal if you've had garlic. You can have parsley. That can also cut the... Um, the, uh, the smell or even the flavor for some people that may be concerned with the garlic breath. Now, what we're going to be, what, what we are highlighting here is not the garlic breath, but the garlic, how garlic can Im basically boost your immune system. Now, even elderberry, now, elderberry. Elderberry is, is reputed by some to be effective in treating the common cold, the flu, and even constipation, hay fever, and even sinus infections. Yes. That is elderberry, the thing, yes, elderberry. Now, a 2019 study on elderberry for both cold and even flu suggested that the fruit substantially reduced upper airway symptoms, upper airway symptoms. It substantially did that, reduced that as well, okay? Now, elderberry, you know, it's a very effective herb that we don't even, we, not many of us don't use it that often, but I have seen that thing. I've seen elderberry even reduce respiratory conditions and even knock out symptoms of even pneumonia and certain things like this by using it correctly and intelligently, my friends, is a very effective remedy that God has made for us. Now, when you look at this here again, you realize that even with the study, another study reposted, uh, those who used it had 50% fewer sick, sick days resulting from a cold than those who didn't, and those who didn't. So if you want to cut your, your, your flu cold by half or even by more, just imagine having elderberry in your, in your routine, garlic, and even echinacea. Imagine all these studies have shown us how this can cut it in half, reduce it by this percentage, you know, cut your days by this amount. Imagine if you really use these effectively, my friends. We have seen this save so many lives as a result, even with people who have gotten COVID-19, even have to cut out, even reduce, and even shorten the symptoms that they have been experiencing. Also, when you look at this as well, a 2012 study suggested that elderberry could help prevent influenza infection by stimulating an immune response. So therefore now, how, do you, how can you now stimulate your immune response? by even using elderberry, even golden seal. Golden seal root is not only used to kill like pathogenic infection, but it's also have a multi-purpose type of uh, effect on your, on your immune system, support, and even your cleansing vital organs. Now, golden seal's active compound, compound which is berberine, uh, may activate your white blood cells, making them more effective at fighting infection and even strengthening the immune system, even strengthening the immune system, and that is golden seal. Now, what about uh, what about uh, mullein? Mullein contain uh, it, it could help you to maintain a healthy respiratory system. The leaves of mullein and the flowers are considered expectorants. What does that mean? Is that they could help to bring up mucus and also as a demulcent, meaning that they can also soothe the irritated membrane. What about myrrh? Myrrh is also known to have expectorant effects that can reduce the discomfort of respiratory problems, offering relief for colds, congestion, coughs, bronchitis, and even phlegm. Yes, my friends, imagine putting this together in a combined program as well with the laws of health, the principles, the lifestyle principles that God has given to us. Imagine how effective we can boost our immune system in such a powerful way to be able to serve as some sort of uh, antidote or weapon against this deadly virus. In other words, my friends, what we should be stressing a lot on here today and even throughout this time is to really boost our immune system. Let's go to the next slide here today. I'm going to mention two more here, two more herbs that you can look into, which is uh, three more. That is uh, lobelia or maybe four more. Lobelia, cayenne, peppermint, and eucalyptus, right? And we're not going to get into all of the specifics here, but we can see that even with these as well, we have seen that, that it can effectively affect your immune system in a very positive way. 
So our next slide reveals to us, therefore, what are some supplements then? What are some supplements in our next slide for immune building? What are some supplements for building an immune system? And these are, for example, vitamin A. We looked, at, we, looked, we looked at vitamin A a little bit before. Vitamin A, it is considered to be a defensive line for the immune system because it prevents what is called germs, infections, viruses from infecting the body while also helping keep the mucous membrane moist and even soft, right? And the, and the mucous barriers that are found in the nose, the throat, and even mouth need to be kept moist and soft because this helps this helps trap infectious agents and stop them from infiltrating the body. So vitamin A also aids in the production of and function of white blood cells, which help capture and even clear bacteria and even pathogenic agents from even your blood stream. Yes, my friends. And even then, you should, of course, use foods then that are also high in vitamin C, like whole foods also high in vitamin A, and even then you can even supplement to for individuals who may need it, an extra supplement to actually help them in the process here, okay? Now, even with uh, vitamin C and also vitamin D, zinc, and so forth, you realize that vitamin C, and of course, you know, I, I love using these foods then, for when you look at these as well, um, using them as much as possible in its natural whole food form as much as possible. I, mean, I find that it really affects and impacts my system in a very uh, great way. Now, vitamin C, as we looked at a little bit before, also known as ascorbic acid or also ascorbate, is a vitamin found in various foods and sold as dietary supplements, okay? Vitamin C is one of the biggest immune system boosters of all. In fact, a lack of vitamin C can even make you more prone to getting sick. Vitamin C supports the body's immune system by protecting the integrity of the cells and affecting the production and even a function of even white blood cells, vitamin C. And where can you get that? Of course, um, you can get the, uh, it can be supplemented um, to boost it even more, but then there's also foods that are high in vitamin C, foods such as camu, camu. You can look it up on the internet. You can search it up. Camu, camu is a, is a, is a natural food that is extremely high in vitamin C. And what we do here at the Lysol Center as well, we, we take those natural whole foods that are extremely high in vitamin C, combine them together, and use them as a, as a boost to really increase or impact the body's immune system, the body's immune system. And you can also find the presence of vitamin C in, in many orange-colored fruits and so forth and, uh, and so forth, okay? Uh, vitamin C, camu, camu, C-A-M-U, C-A-M-U, camu, camu. If that's new to you, you can look it up on the internet. You can search it up. Um, that is a very interesting food that we have seen, especially for vitamin C. And there's many other types of, um, of natural foods that are extremely high in vitamin C you can find in nature that can really impact your body's immune system. Now, I'm sure that many of us have been hearing a lot about, we learned about vitamin D. I mentioned that already before. But uh, also, vitamin D has been used to treat infections such as tuberculosis before the advent of antibiotics. And if you look throughout medical history, you will realize that tuberculosis centers or where, where they've used for people with these issues, vitamin D was a big part of the protocol or the program. Vitamin D, yes. And if you look at the early sanitarium, um, how vitamin D was used as a medicine, as an extra medicine to be able to really impact your body, not just from a lifestyle perspective, but even to reversing even top killer ailments as well by exposing somebody's body all, uh, to the vitamin D from the sun, right? Getting more sun exposure. Tuberculosis patients were sent to sanatorium where treatment included exposure to sunlight, exposure to sunlight, right? And uh, which, which was thought to directly kill tuberculosis, okay, tuberculosis. Now, zinc, the production of certain immune cells is limited when zinc intake is low. Now, an adequate zinc is crucial to for normal development and even function of the immune system, of the immune system. Now, in a review of about 575 people with a common cold, supplemented with more than 70, 75 milligrams of zinc per day 
75 milligrams of zinc per day, it reduced the duration of the cold by 33%. I mean, how then do you, do you see so many people using zinc and talking about zinc and how zinc can actually help a lot of individuals. And now there's actually there's a lot of studies to back this up to show that, hey, if I take this in the right doses, this can actually reduce my cold duration. Now, just imagine doing vitamin C, zinc, vitamin D, the lifestyle program, the herbal tea, all together. Imagine, my friends, if it's done correctly, right, in the right format, in the right amount of doses and so forth, you can really impact your immune system, right? Now, even for those that are here with me today, I have a gift for you too. So if you're writing notes down, I know that some of those are taking it down, probably taking screenshots or pictures of your screen. Um, what I wanted to do, what, what I want to give you at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you a book that we put together on COVID-19 and how to fight it naturally. And a lot of the information I've shared here with you and even more information on the remedies and, and everything here, I'm going to send, I'm going to give you a book that you can download that will give you all of this vital information that I'm sharing with you here today. So you're going to get that and even more, okay? I just want to let you know that for some of us that may be taking notes or find it hard to follow, just to know that um, I have a gift for you. At the end of this presentation, I'm going to give that to you. So just stick around for a moment, okay? Now, with that, with that said, also, we should be, also, you can also use uh, what is called prebiotics and even probiotics. Next slide, please, as we look at this together. So another way we can uh, affect our immune system is how cleansing even can support your body's immune system, okay? How cleansing can support your body's immune system. Now, cleansing helps to reset your body and even its immune system. Scientists at the USC found out that individuals who fasted for 72 hours saw a reduction in white blood cells that the body did not need. And then when those began to eat again, the body made a brand new supply of white blood cells, right? Even then, you see that even cleansing can also impact your body's immune system cells, even in a positive way. Now, when you look at this, therefore, we should also learn how to cleanse your colon, your kidneys, your, your liver, your, your blood and lymph. You know, basically the eliminatory channels of your system, right, should always be clean. The same way that, you know, many of us, we go, we change the car, we change the oil of our car, we do servicing. Have you ever thought about servicing your body, like doing the change, doing the oil change? When's the last time you, you've done a, an oil change or a cleanse? Are, are you following me? Um, so therefore, my friend, we should be able to do that. I know some of us, we probably grew up in times where before you actually went to school, you know, like your parents will give you some sort of a, a shock cleansing period of time where you will, you know, like use the bathroom a lot and really help you reduce the toxicity in your, in your system and your body, right? So therefore, we, can, we saw and we see an impact of how cleansing can even support your immune system. Now, colon cleansing. Substantial, subsequently, up to 70% of a, of a person's immune system resides in the wall of the colon. Now, this immune organ is intimately tied to the type of bacteria within the colon. Now, we, we, have, we, we can have this, uh, have between maybe about uh, uh, 20, 50 to, um, to, to 20 pounds of waste in our colon, uh, disrupting our friendly bacteria, and even therefore weakening your and my immune system. Now, do you know, my friends, do you know that the average American has about 5 to 20 pounds of waste in the colon. Yes, and we have seen it all the time. We have seen how people can do cleanses. In about a few days, they can reduce like about 10 pounds, right? And some of it could be very well linked to the excessive waste in the colon. And imagine waste in a colon that is not being taken out through the natural process of having a bowel movement. Therefore, how can we impact our colon is by increasing your water intake and even increasing your fiber from various foods, such as your vegetables, right? Even other plant foods like fruits and so forth uh, have what is called fiber. Even then, too, you can increase your fiber to really impact your colon by using what is called flax seed. So take flax seed, you can ground it up, take about a tablespoon of flax seed, uh, you can put it over your cereal. You can put it over your salad. That can also help to increase the fiber in your foods 
and even then helps you increase the amount of bowel movements that you have on a regular basis. Okay? And that is one way you can do that by increasing your fiber and even your water intake as well, have enough water in your system, because if you increase fiber, you need to subsequently increase your water intake as well to be able to have healthy bowel movement. Now, when you look at the kidneys now, kidney cleanses and so forth, the kidney, the immune system, and the kidneys are closely linked, okay? The, um, the kidney has a central role in the uh, electrolyte, uh, like the homeostasis, and even the removal of toxins and so that uh, when its uh, function is compromised, the normal immune effector cell function and even intestinal microbiome uh, homeostasis are even disturbed. So with that too, the kidney failure, kidney failure affects general immunity, causing intestinal barrier dysfunction, system, systemic um, like inflammation, and even immunodeficiency that contribute to the more, like, like the um, morbidity and even the mortality of patients with kidney disease. That's why if somebody has kidney disease, or renal failure, or any sort of kidney dysfunction, you can put yourself more at risk, right, uh, for this issue, right, for this issue called COVID-19. Now, even then, normally, your body fights off with anything that isn't part of itself, like germs and even bacteria. Now, that system of protection is called your immune system, like we learned before. And having kidney disease or kidney failure can weaken your immune system, making it easier for infections to take hold. That's why people with poor kidney function and so forth could get sick, could get sick very often and get a cold very often and so forth, or even get viruses very easily, right? Now, the liver. The liver, a, mal a malfunction in the liver causes uh, what is called the immune dysfunction, namely systemic inflammation, and even help, and even can damage the immune system response, right? And that is the innate immunity involvement, right? And even your production of acute uh, phase proteins and others, right? So even then, you realize how even having a poor liver, a uh, function in liver can even leave you at risk. Now, even with parasites, a large number of parasites can even suppress your immune system uh, in response to pathogens, and even including T cells and even cytokines. Now, even then, we were working with somebody with a deadly um, virus, right? He had, a he had a deadly virus that directly impacted his body's immune system, right? He had some sort of sexual transmitted disease, okay? Now, with this deadly issue that he experienced, we were able to put him on what is called parasite cleansing. And in a matter of doing that, by using such uh, herbs that can even impact uh, parasites are things like, um, you know, like... Um, papaya seeds, and uh, even worm wood, and there's many other bitter uh, types of herbs that can actually impact your system and even help to kill off some of those issues there. Now, with the parasite cleanse, we're able to put this man on some sort of parasite uh, cleanse drink. And when he started to drink this down on a daily basis with this deadly immune suppressing disease that he had, literally, my friends, we were, we were able to see many parasites come out of this man every time he used the toilet. I'm talking about, it was so many parasites. It startled me to see that can actually exist in a human being. Wow. And as a result of, we kept doing it and we kept seeing parasites flush and flush and flush until we didn't see parasites anymore. And it was very interesting to see now that link, therefore, between his immune system and also that uh, that all parasites can also weaken him in that regard. Now, even then as well, as we go a step further, my friends, you're going to realize a few things here today, okay? As we understand this, uh, let's go to the next slide here. Of course, blood building, we should be able to build our blood. So let's look at here the potent natural remedies then, secret number six, to fight viruses and even to boost immunity. So the next slide. Okay, so we're going to look at four steps, four steps in fighting top killer diseases and boosting immunity through natural remedies. Now, step number one, and I hope you write it down. Step number one, the cause should be ascertained. In other words, we should be able to reason from what? From cause to effect. My friends, when it comes to fighting top killer diseases and top killer ailments and conditions, we should always go back to the root cause. What is causing my diabetes? What is causing my heart disease? What has caused my, my arthritis or my headache or 
whatever issues that I may have as well, and what is impacting that. And therefore, as we realize what is impacting this, we should find out the cause of this. It could be diet, it could be a lack of exercise, poor rest, not exposing ourselves to uh, sunlight or fresh air and so forth, right? So I want to emphasize these lifestyle principles that, that we looked at before, that this can not only impact you or your body's immune system, but also can impact you with diabetes and heart disease and many other problems that you may be experiencing. And I can tell you this, um, we worked with uh, some people, people are coming here at the center, and we, I'm telling you, my friends, we've been seeing some powerful uh, result that God has allowed individuals to experience. And with that, too, uh, somebody came in with a glucose levels of 276, right? Glucose levels, very high sugar levels, 276. And um, in a matter of three to five days, by drinking water, exercising, and going on a plant-based nutritional plan, my friends, by the mercy and by the grace of God, the man that was on this program was able to see his sugar drop from 276 as low as 85 in about three to five days. And I said, what is this? Praise the Lord, because he realized something here. He said, I'm the problem. He said, I'm the problem. He realized he was the problem. Because what he did was change his lifestyle, change his habits by the power of God. And as a result of this, he was able to see an effective change in his glucose numbers that impacted his life just by following the plan that God has given. And let's go to the next one. So we want to find out what is causing it. It could be poor diet. It could be poor diet. It could be different things. Step number two. Unhealthful conditions should be changed. In other words, my friends, there may be, problems, there may be conditions that, uh, that may impact us in a very, uh, you know, impact our health. And these conditions could be our work environments. It could be different factors in our lifestyles and so forth. We want to be able to identify those issues. Because to do the same thing over and over and expect a different outcome or different result, that is defined as being insane or insanity. Therefore, in order for you to truly experience change in your health, in your lifestyle, you must be willing, my friend, to take a complete U-turn. Are you following this? To take a U-turn. To, In other words, if I know that, uh, for example, with diabetes, high sugar and high fat especially – Sugar and even fat, especially now, we're talking about fat, especially through dietary fat, through uh, animal sources, could directly impact even my glucose levels. Therefore, I should examine this and be willing to make a U-turn in my life, right? To make a turn that can impact me in the best way forward. Okay, so changing health conditions. Step number three. Step number three here. Wrong habits should be corrected. Maybe... You have a very, maybe we have bad habits where we, we have not exercised for the whole year. You mean, we have, uh, even as, as this year has begun, some of us have probably never exercised at all. And I, I didn't say that to make you feel bad. I don't want you to feel bad, but I just want to emphasize here, my friends, that we have to be willing to make a change. And you know what? God is able to give you the power to make that change. Because even in my life, I too have to pray for God's power to help me to follow this principle. Because I'm telling you this, the flesh is what? It's weak, but the spirit is what? It is willing. You want to do what is right, but the flesh could say something different. And that's why we have to pray for the power of God to help us to make those active steps and active changes to affect our habits, our habits of living, to affect our sleeping patterns, to affect our exercise habits as well, drinking enough water, um, exposing ourselves to sunshine and so forth. And some of us, you know, we may, we may try to be thinking, I want you to think right now, you know, um, how can you make this a daily routine in your life? I know that we may have different things going on. Some may be working in different places. Uh, you may have different schedules. 
Uh, you may have various things, but I can tell you this. Once you ask God to give you the strength, to give you the wisdom and the knowledge to learn how to implement what I'm sharing with you into your daily lifestyle, then you're going to realize that he will give you the insight. He will give you in- insight that you were like, wow, how come I never thought about this, that I can do this this way? Okay, so don't limit yourself to saying that, oh, I will never get exercise. Oh, I will never eat right. You know, I've tried it so many times. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just not possible. The information is okay. You know, it's good. But you know what? Um, you know, my friends, do not depend on your own strength. I want to encourage us today to depend on the strength of God because he is able. He is able to give you the power to live according to his will. Step number four. I hope you have step number four here today. Step number four. Then nature is to be assisted in her efforts to do two things. So how should we assist nature? We should assist nature to do what? To effectively do two things. Number one, to expel impurities. We call that detoxification. We call that reducing toxicity in the system through cleansing and toxification. Expel impurities from the system. And step number two now, we then want to reestablish right conditions in the system. So after you follow step number one, after you follow step number two, and then step number three, then we should be considering now step number four that can directly, how can we assist nature now in her efforts? So in other words, that means that how can you and I assist the body in its efforts to expel impurities and now to reestablish the right conditions that the body should experience? And therefore, we can do that today in our next slide. We can do this by natural remedies. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> natural remedies. I'm going to go to our video demonstration at this time that will show us several things and how we can use natural remedies to boost your immune system and also deal with the symptoms of COVID-19 that some of us had experienced or we know people that have experienced it before. Our next remedy will be our steam inhalation. Now, steam inhalation is very, very powerful. And one of our favorite things to use in our steam inhalation would be menthol crystals. Now, if you do not have the menthol crystals, you can also use peppermint oil or even eucalyptus oil because 70% of the peppermint is made up of menthol. And also eucalyptus contain menthol in there as well. So now menthol is very powerful because it's anti-tusive, meaning that it's a cough suppressant. And also, it helps to thin out the mucus and bring it up, which is expectorant. And what we'll be doing here, we'll be get, you pouring in the, the menthol crystals into this humidifier here. And the steam will allow the mucus to run down, and then you will be able to clear up any obstruction that you may have in your respiratory tract. So now what I'll do here... So I'll take this out here. You'll put some menthol crystals inside. Not a whole lot because it's very, very potent. Whew. I can smell this already. And then what we'll do, we'll close this up. And the fun part, you go close to it here and you breathe in the steam. Ooh. <clears throat> Ooh. Very, very strong and potent. <laughs> and what you do now, after you've done that, you will blow your nose and get rid of any mucus that may be inside of your respiratory tracts. Now, if you don't have a humidifier at home, you can use a kettle. You'll take a kettle, you'll boil it, boil the water, and you'll put your peppermint oil. You can do 15 drops of peppermint oil or eucalyptus oil or put your menthol crystals in there and you'll take a newspaper and use it as a funnel and breathe through there. You can also take a pot with boiling water and you'll put your oils in there or your menthol crystals. You can put a, a towel over your head and you'll just inhale the steam. Whatever it is that can produce steam and you can put your essentials oil in there, you can use that and that will help to get rid of any extra mucus that may be in your respiratory tract. All right, now, so our next remedy is an immune boost drink. 
And this immune, immune boost ring is very, very potent. It actually helps you to, it actually may help stimulate what is called your immune response and to help your body cope or even be able to fight any sort of viruses or any sort of germs or any bacteria that may be laying around uh, in the body that shouldn't be there. Now, this drink is actually very potent and very effective. And so it's very, very simple. And this is how you make it. What do you want to do? You want to grab a blender, okay? You want to do this in a blender. Um, you can use any blender that you have at home. Uh, that should work fine. And then you want to add your ingredients of grapefruit, right? I'm going to put one grapefruit and you can go ahead and peel the skin off the grapefruit or if you have a nice organic grapefruit, um, you can just chop up the, uh, the grapefruit with the skin on. Make sure you wash it very, very well. And then you want to add uh, all of this uh, grapefruit into your blender. So I'm going to simply add the grapefruit to the blender. Okay, just like this. All right, so you will need one grapefruit. Now the other ingredient um, in this immune boost drink is an orange. That is one orange. So I'm going to add this orange. And then you will need two lemons. So what I've done, I've already juiced the, um, the lemons um, in some sort of juicer. And, um, and if you want as well, you can even keep the skin on the lemon itself. Some people actually do that. Um, you just want to wash the lemons nicely and then you want to chop it up and then put it into your blender. It actually makes the drink a little more potent as well and also increases the lemonin that is found in the, uh, the lemon. That's also responsible for boosting your immune system naturally. So therefore, I would just pour the, um, the two juiced lemons into the blender, just like this. And then you will want to get now three cloves of garlic, three cloves of garlic and also a half of a large onion. So what I've done, I've already went ahead and chopped this, uh, pre-chopped this for you. So I chopped half an onion and also the three cloves of garlic is right in there as well. And I'll go ahead and put this into the, uh, into the blender. Okay. And afterwards, one more ingredient you will need is peppermint. Peppermint, three drops of peppermint. Okay. Count with me. One, two, three. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. And so now what you will want to do is take this to a blend. I want to blend all, the, all of these ingredients together. So therefore you want to liquefy this. And as a matter of fact, now this looks absolutely delicious right now and uh, very, very, it's probably very tasty too. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and pour this drink in a cup, just like this. Look at the consistency and just, just let us know what you think uh, in the chat box about this. Look at this consistency. This looks delicious. So you want to use one cup of this immune boost drink. You want to drink this every day until your symptoms begin to reduce and until you feel that your body uh, is getting stronger and stronger. And then simply what you want to do is you want to take a cup every day, but you want to use probably like a tablespoon and you want to drink this maybe about 30 minutes um, a day, 30 minutes uh, throughout the day, every 30 minutes throughout the day. Wow, I can actually, I can actually feel my chest opening up and everything. This is, um, this is actually a very potent drink, an immune drink. <clears throat> and um, you can see how it can already affect your body almost immediately. So drink this throughout the day and do this until your symptoms lower. And therefore, for you to do, for you to be able to, uh, to you can also store the rest of this uh, ingredients. Um, you can store this by simply putting it into a jar, uh, into a container, and then you want to refrigerate that. You can keep that for about maybe three to five uh, days, 
and you can keep it in your refrigerator. And when it's time to use, you can simply warm it up lightly over your stovetop um, or any warmer that you have. And then you want to make sure that you use this remedy warm. It's actually much better. Your body can be able to assimilate it a little bit more effective. Now I can still feel the effects of this, uh, this one tablespoon that I took. And it's actually very, very powerful uh, to use an immune boost drink. So try making this at home and also try using this simple remedy and let us know the impact that it has on your body. So we're going to move to our next uh, remedy here today. All right, for our next remedy, we'll be looking at something called a cough syrup. And notice something here. Majority of the recipes or ingredients, if not all of them, could be found right in your kitchen with a few extra items that cost very little. And we'll be sharing with you how you can continue to use those things that is very cost efficient to be able to get powerful results. Now for the cough syrup, I remember not too long ago, a lady called into the center and we placed her on one of our Heal at Home programs. She decided to become a Heal at Home member and because of the respiratory issues that she was having at the moment. So at that time, what we told her was that, okay, we'll go ahead, um, do your entire assessment. We did an entire protocol, sent out an entire kit to her, instructionals, walk her through step by step, everything she needs to do to overcome that particular respiratory issue. Remember as she embarked upon this program, she started it off. Got a call not too long after when she, when she, in, in, during the daytime and she said, hey, guess what happened? All through the night, I was not able to sleep. So I'm like, what is going on? I mean, why aren't you able to, sleep, to rest? They say, well, I noticed that I, you know, the cough syrup that I'll be showing with you right now, which she also made, she said that she noticed when she made the cough syrup, she brought it into the room, and as a result of it being in the room, she said she forgot to close the jar. She left it open, she went through the night, she started to sleep, and immediately, uh, mucus began to be ex uh, removed from her entire nasal, upper, and even lower respiratory area. She began to sneeze and cough and release, release lots of phlegm. And as a result, she said, well, like, I had a terrible night because all through the night, I was releasing lots and loads of mucus from my body. I said, well, it's not a good thing that you didn't get rest, but it's a good problem that everything is being removed finally. But she said, when she recognized what happened, she simply closed the jar, brought it out of the room, and uh, the rest of the night was perfectly fine. Now, for just inhaling it, already she was having so many powerful effects. Imagine when she began taking it internally, what it did to her as well. So I'll be showing you very quickly what you could do to be able to help expel, to help remove mucus from your entire body. So we'll be looking at this cough syrup here and the very first one that we'll be adding into our mixture, which is already mixed, we'll be adding in two bulbs of garlic chopped up into a, you can get a mason jar or any other jar that you can place it in. So you get two bulbs of gar uh, garlic chopped up, you place it inside of that jar and also two whole onions chopped up as well. In this jar is already the garlic and the onion, which is two bulbs and also two whole onions. Also in the recipe, we'll be adding in ginger, which is one cup of chopped ginger, and also four tablespoons of chopped horseradish. So we'll be adding in our ginger and also the horseradish into this mixture, placing it in to this jar. And we'll be simply putting everything into one jar where we'll be allowing it to soak to be able to absorb the properties so that we, uh, we can be able to help in fighting off whatever respiratory issue and using it as a cough syrup. In addition to that, our lemon is already pre-squeezed. Uh, pre so this is the juice of three lemons, which we'll be adding into our mixture. So you're placing the juice of three lemons into this cup. Right after you're placing the lemon, very simply, you grab your peppermint oil. And this is a wonderful peppermint oil as well that we actually began manufacturing from our herbal company, Easy Series. So I'll simply be placing in five drops of this into our mixture. One, two, three, four, all right, great, wonderful. Smells good already. And I have here half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Just dropping this in here, 
And the final ingredient we'll be using is that of honey. So honey is also very powerful to add in and, and we implement everything within that entire mixture. I'll be showing a few simply how you can be able to um, continue to make it so that way you can be able to obtain optimal results. So you simply want to put in about one cup of honey or you place in enough honey to be able to cover the entire mixture. So notice when I place it in, it's not thoroughly mixed. You want to grab a spoon or any other utensil where you can be able to allow the honey to properly mix within your entire, um, your entire cough syrup mixture. I'm going to place in some more. It smells really good right now. And if you're doing this at home, it's something that is very simple that even the younger one, maybe allow your five-year-old, six-year-old, nine-year-old to make it because they could be excited about making it and it might encourage them to even drink it if they also are experiencing any issues. Now, this is something that really, um, from toddler all the way up, can be able to use. It's not just for adults. So it's something that even your grandkids or your children can take advantage of if they also are experiencing any of those symptoms. If they also are experiencing any of those symptoms, it's a wonderful remedy that gives a powerful effect by simply just using it. So this is done here. Let me see. Close this up. Our mixture is done. It's very simple what you do right now. You close up the jar. And as you close up the jar, you want to store this into a dark room. So you store it in a dark room, maybe your pantry or any other dark area. And you leave it there for maybe about anywhere from three to seven days. Three to seven days, you leave it in there. But every day you come back in and you shake it. You come back in, day number two, you shake, you place it back. Day number three, you come back, you shake, and you place it back into that area. Right when it's done, you want to be able to, uh, you can also strain out the entire, all the different ingredients extracted from the liquid, and you will be basically using a teaspoon of that liquid as needed. Now, if you need lots of it, you can use several of it throughout the day, or you can be able to use it on an as needed basis as in a basis and I know many of you who may also experience, experience symptoms and who may possibly even make this from tonight and you may be wondering do I really have to wait three to seven days even before drinking this well guess what I like doing because sometimes things are immediate and we need to take immediate action immediate steps so what I really like doing as well is even before that three day time I've come or have arrived I will simply take a scoop about a teaspoon even with the onion the garlic and everything else and I will eat that down uh, you know I'll eat that down chew everything up and that is also very powerful because the honey haven't fully extracted everything as yet by eating it you allow it to to give you much more immediate effects and relief so this is your simple cough syrup recipe that you your grandkids and your children can take advantage of today Wonderful, wonderful. So as we, as we proceed to our next presentation here um, as well, uh, we're going to ask a few questions afterwards, but I'm just going to wrap this one up really quickly here today. And let's go to our next slide. Um, and I hope that this was very helpful to many of us. And if you're wondering about the ingredients, um, you can go to the next one in the meantime. Next slide. If you're wondering about the ingredients, um, uh, I'm going to give you a guide as well. You can, you're able to download this guide um, so that you can um, find all the recipes and ingredients that we went over um, as well, so that you can make some of these things at home. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this that I want to give you here is uh, Ultimate Guide. It's an ebook, the Ultimate Guide to Fight COVID-19 Naturally, and uh, you can you can take that link down bit.ly forward slash free COVID guide. Okay. So you can take a picture of this, and if somebody can write it down and put it in the chat as well, that would be great um, so that uh, you have the information um, that is needed 
for you. And this is a free guide that you can use. You can share it with others. Um, you can download it. You can print it out. You can translate it into another language. You can share it with people all over the world. Um, you know, just get information out there before others because people need the information um, that is being shared. So if you want to access this ultimate guide to fight COVID naturally. So let's put our next slide here today. Uh, if you already have that, hopefully that you have that. And uh, so that's what we see here, that prevention, my friends, is better than cure. So it's better to prevent the problem than to go throughout the curative process. And when you go to our next slide as well, I want to understand this principle here together as we proceed forward and as we close off for today. If thou wilt, the Bible says here that if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will and give air to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, the Bible says here, God says here that I will put what? I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he left thee. So, what then is the basis of health? The basis of health is, therefore, obedience. Obedience to the plan, the principles and laws that God has set forth before us. And let's go to our next slide here today. So, as we understand this, therefore, health is not by chance and not it is by choice. We looked at it before, earlier in our presentation. It is by the choices that we make. So I want to encourage us to make a choice today. Let's go to our next slide here today, our next one, okay? I want to encourage us to make a choice, to make a choice to follow the principles that God has given to us, to follow the plan to what, to what God has given to us, and, you know, to, to implement the principles of health. Next slide, please. And as we learn more about this, realize, my friends, that you reap what you sow. So whatever you're doing now in your life, whatever you, however you live in, will impact you one way or another. So you reap what you sow. So if you sow good habits, expect to reap good results. If you sow bad habits, you can also expect to reap uh, bad results. And that's not just in only eating, but it's in every area of our lifestyle that can really impact, not just on a physical level, but even spiritually and even mentally as well can directly impact us. Let's go to our next slide here today. So when you look at it here, I want to encourage us as well. I'll go to our next slide. We're going to spend so much time on this one here. This is some more stories and testimonies. We can pass through this. There's some testimonies and stories of people that have been helped and have been impacted as a result. I want to leave us this. What is God's desire for you and for me? The Bible tells us in 3 John 2, the love. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Next slide, please. So God wants us to prosper, my friends, in health. Life or death. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death. Blessings and cursing. Therefore, the Bible encourages us in this direction, my friends. The Bible tells us to do what? To choose life. To choose Help to choose to build your immune system. And that's how critical it is right now. Why? That you and even your children may live. My friends, COVID-19 is a life and death situation. Diseases, all kinds of common ailments, chronic ailments. This is life and death. But the Bible here encourages us, my friends, to do something that is very powerful. And that is to make a choice, to choose life, to choose health. Heavenly Father, even as I pray, I just want to thank you so much for all you've done and what you're doing. And give us the strength, for Lord, to choose life, that we and even our children, others around us may have an opportunity to experience life. Lord, not just life upon this earth, like as you promise us in your word, you said abundant life, the life hereafter. So I ask that you give us the strength to implement the principles that we looked at here today in its various areas and help us to practically put it to use that we can truly see an impact in our body's immune system, even on our health, our overall health, whether we may have different common problems or deadly detrimental terminal conditions. Lord, help us. Give us the strength 
to live for you. Be with each person here today, we pray. And thank you for your power and your strength to live like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Okay, we're going to entertain some questions at this time before we're going to end here at 5. So questions at this time. So we had a few questions here as well. How long? I'm going, to, I'm going to go through my chat, so I may get to, let me see here. Okay, my chat is having an issue. That's strange. Okay. So let's see. How long can I store the cough syrup? How long can I store the cough syrup? Um, you can allow this to be able to marinate in there and also to extract ingredients in the, in the, le- in the honey. So therefore, what you what you can do is that um, what you can do is that you can keep the um, keep the cough syrup uh, for about a few days um, as well. You can put it, you can keep it there for about maybe three to seven days to let it sit. Um, you know what I mean? And then afterwards, after it sits down for a while, then you want to be able to take out the pulp, um, the the extra you know ingredients that's there. And, uh, and then you want to strain it and keep the liquid itself. Keep the liquid itself. And, uh, and then as a result of this, you want to be able to use that. You can use that now as a cough syrup. You can store it in your refrigerator. And you can take about a tablespoon of this, um, you know, like two or three times a day. If you have a cold or an ailment, then you can have it um, several times a day, um, probably every hour uh, to knock it off really quickly. Uh, if you're experiencing some sort of, uh, you know, like flu or flu-like symptoms, or the cold, or even the virus, right? Okay. So the next question here that we had was, um, let's see here. Oh, oh, I, I think I know what happened. Can can somebody assist me? Um, can somebody assist me with the question that was there before? Because when I when I came out, I believe my my uh, my recording my recording came out and it came back in, and therefore the whole chat is not there anymore. I can only see. You know, that's the only one I can see here. So, um, can somebody assist me with uh, sharing your questions again? If you have that, I'll somebody can tell me it on the microphone. Uh, that will help me as well to be able to answer some of those questions that we had, okay? I'll be looking through. Um, in the meantime, there, there is a hand raised. Okay. Mr. Yes. Carl? Okay, so some people ask him for the hand raised. You can go ahead. In fact, Sister Carol did have a question here. Maybe this is why her hand was up. I see, I see. It just, I just. Hello. Okay, go Thank ahead. You. Thank you for taking me. Um, good afternoon. Happy Sabbath, my brother. Could yes, you, I'm talking um, to you as well. <laughs> could you yeah. go over the um, parasite cleanse? And before you give me the ingredients for the parasite cleanse, could you? also give instructions, but I had one comment about the parasites. Usually medical missionaries um, advocate um, cleansing the colon and parasites um, together. And sometimes they recommend the coffee enema. Could you talk a little bit about that before you provide the ingredients for the parasite cleanse and the instructions? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. No no problem at all. Yes. Um, so. It is actually good, like if you're doing any parasite cleansing, or if you're doing like um, even liver cleansing too, um, to do it together with uh, with the colon cleansing as well, because you do not want any, you know, any parasites because they will usually come through the rectum. If if you're concerned about how it comes out, some people may want to know uh, it comes through the rectum as well. So um, with that as well, keep in mind that the colon, of course, needs to be cleansed and needs to be cleaned out. Um, that's very important. So one way that that can be done to to speed up the process, it depends on the ailment or the condition, um, is that people either do like enemas or so forth, and even like colon colon cleansing by using flaxseed. You can use psyllium husk. You can use uh, aloe vera. Um, you can use um, many different types of high fiber foods um, and so forth to help to affect the colon. Okay, and this this could be used in a in a dynamic way together, um, and and usually we always use it together. 
just because of the way that the body works and how parasites get eliminated through the system, okay? So even with that too, I'm going to give you a very simple uh, parasite uh, recipe to use. And I know some of us use, um, we, we may be, uh, we may use, for example, like um, uh, papayas and so forth, right? So if you use papayas in any way um, as well, you know, I know we throw away the seeds, but I want you, next time you eat a papaya, I want you to keep the seeds, okay? <laughs> I know it's, we are so quick to throw the seeds away. So if you want to keep it, you can even dry it as well. You put it in a dehydrator or you can dry it out and just store it uh, to use it at a later time. But what you can do, you can take the papaya seed, about a tablespoon of this. This is a good way to do a parasite cleansing as well. Um, you want to take a tablespoon of papaya seed and, um, and then you want to take that tablespoon and eat that every day for about 10 days as well, okay? One tablespoon. And that can help to impact um, even parasites as well. Now, keep in mind that papaya uh, seeds is not the best tasting. So what you can do to make it a little bit more palatable and also even more effective as well is by adding some honey on that tablespoon of papaya seeds, put some honey on top of it, so that it can be a little bit more palatable to take in because it tends to be a little bitter. And also with that as well, um, you, it also helps to work dually on the parasites because parasites, they like, they like sugar, so they can get attracted to it as well. And also in the, it, it's almost like creating a parasite trap, right, where you have the parasite, where you have the honey, and also you, have the, um, you also have the papaya seeds as well. So that's a simple way you can use to be able to eliminate parasites. Now, we can get a little bit more complex here a little bit more detail when it comes to parasite cleansing by using herbs such as the wormwood and so forth. But be, keep in mind as well that if you are pregnant, you want to be mindful in using these type of herbs. The reason being that you want to be careful with that is that um, that can cause women to lose the child. Are you following this? Because that's how impactful the herb is, right? But if you are in a normal situation, then of course you will see some impacts there in a in a positive way into in for your body systems. Okay. Hopefully that helps. What about All the right. juice, the um the um the parasite juice that you were talking about earlier? What are the ingredients for that, if I may politely ask? Sure, sure. Um well you, you can use the uh so there's, there's different ways that you can do it here as well. Now, with the, with the juice itself, with it's more like a tea, uh, more like a parasite tea, um, then what you can do, because what you can do then is that you can use the, uh, the wormwood and make a tea out of it, right? Um, you can use a powder, um, use a powder, make a tea out of that, and, uh, and then you can drink that down. Um, and we usually tend to do that for about seven to 10 days before we can really start seeing the impact on parasites in the system. And uh, we, even have, we even have seen, you know, in how we, you know, in, the, in doing this, we have seen about four inch parasites come out of people. I know that sounds a little bit strange and weird and disgusting, right? But yes, it is possible to see that come out of individuals and uh, uh, nine inch parasites come out of individuals as well. So you can use those um, and we can get more specific in there, but that's the general scope of uh, something that can be done as well um, if you want to be able to reduce the parasites in your body and eliminate them. And there's My even brother, cases too I'm as well. Sorry. I'm sorry. My brother, I'm sorry. When you say yeah. powder, are you recommending turning the seeds into a, a powder? I'm not following that. For, for, which, for which one? Are you talking about the, um, the wormwood? For the parasite cleanse, how, what kind of okay. powder are you referring okay. to, my brother? Yeah, the wormwood powder, you can actually get it in a powdered form, right? You can get okay. it in a powdered form or you can get it in a capsule form. And that might be a little bit easier to take down because it tends to be, it's not the best tasting. Most, most foods or most herbs for parasites, it's not good tasting. I can say this for personal experience, it's not a good tasting thing. But uh, it actually really helps with that too. So you can find uh, the wormwood capsules. Um, it's, a, it's a powdered powdered uh, herb that they put into the capsules and then it's easier to take in or to ingest. 
right? And, um, and also, keep in mind as well that if you want to get the powder itself, then uh, even pumpkin seed as well, you can even get the pumpkin seed powder too and combine those together and use like um, maybe like half a tablespoon or, half a, or even a teaspoon as well. You can put it in some water. That is a, that is a pumpkin seed of powder. So that's a different form. You can get it in that form, form um, to ingest it that way. And, uh, and also keep in mind that it's going to be very bitter. So um, you can take it down with uh, a natural juice, you know what I mean, to make it much more palatable uh, to consume. But if, you are, if it's not really good tasty for you, tasting for you, then you can always do like, um, you can always do the, the capsule form um, that can really help in that way. Okay. Thank you. There are two yes. questions in the chat that you did not see. Yes. One, okay. two has to do with zinc. What is the safest daily amount of zinc supplement? Is 50 milligram of zinc citrate too high for the daily intake? And the other one was about what foods are high in zinc. Is there a particular brand of zinc you would recommend? Right, okay, okay. So um, also um, zinc consumption too as well, it's, it's very, it's disease specific and it's problem specific, right? I know that some people may read different studies or out there on certain limits of zinc that you should take in at a certain time or a certain day or so a certain period. So keep in mind that there is those limitations that come into effect, right? And it also depends on the ailment or the problem that somebody has right, then the doses changes based upon that. So what I'd like to tell you as well, if you want to do it for just um, a lifestyle perspective or a regular perspective for a period of time for any, to just affect your immune system and so forth, then you, then you want to do, do what is recommended on the bottle. You can use the recommendation there. Uh, but when it, when it comes to like people who have COVID-19 or, or people who have other serious issues as well, then the doses will change because the condition is different, right? The condition is different. So there's no like one size fit all type of situation. So I just want to be um, very clear on that situation, right? Um, so I just want to be just very one size fit all, okay? So keep that in mind as well. So I always like to use what is generally recommended. Now, another thing here too as well is um, some of the foods that you can use um, for with zinc is um, foods such as you know, like avocados also has zinc there in, in as well. Um, blackberries, uh, you can also find that there. You can find it's in pomegranates and raspberries and even guavas, guavas, uh, cantaloupe, um, uh, I like apricots and um, peaches, kiwis, blueberries, a lot of the berries and so forth. You can find, uh, you can get some presence of zinc there as well uh, in some of those fruits. Um, as well. So there is, so also um, you can even find a lot more foods too as well that may have naturally occurring uh, zinc in there. So you can use those even intentionally into your diet as well. Um, that would be, that'd be very, very good. Now, as it is a specific brand, I will not recommend any specific brand. Um, but what you want to do, if you look at the ingredient list, you want to make sure that it is what it is, what it says it is uh, when it comes to zinc and also the sources. So for me, I prefer to use natural sources for my supplements as much as possible if you're going to be supplementing it, right? Uh, just because of, uh, of assimilation and how your body will use them, right? How your body will actually use them. So just be mindful of that too. Um, the whole food form is, is the best way. And also using extracts as well, like healthy natural extracts can also work as well. Okay, so... Um, Type of foods that can help to boost your white blood cell count are foods such as, somebody's asking another question here, foods that increase your white blood cell count, um, foods such as um, citruses, uh, also cruciferous vegetables, you know, vitamin C, high vitamin C foods that can actually impact your, your, your white blood cell count. Now, also, if you are able to, you can also do what is called contrast showers. Right? Contrast showers, what is that? Is a, a shower alternations, right? Hot and cold water. So in other words, um, you can get under the shower and, and you want to put the water as hot as you can tolerate the water. 
And, um, and then you want that water to hit your body and let it sit there and let it hit you for about three minutes or so. And then after three minutes, then you want to transition it to cold. Just shut up the hot water and let, let the cold run. And, uh, and then you want that cold to, to hit you for about 30 seconds. And then you want to transition again to hot, as hot as you can tolerate. And then you want to switch that off and go to the cold and alternate that about three times. That Doing that regularly can actually impact your blood cell count. We even see many studies where hydrotherapy, uh, hydriatic procedures, uh, has actually been used to impact your white blood cell and even your red blood cell count. Now, even if somebody has even iron levels as well, how to boost your iron levels, uh, somebody has a question too, um, what you can do to, to boost your iron levels is, uh, is of course, you, you, can, you can use like, um, like uh, raisins, um, apricots, uh, natural grape juice without any sugars or additives or concentrations, just pure 100% grape juice. Yes, you can find it in certain places. You, you can't find it everywhere. Um, and, um, and so you can use that as, as long as with figs, as well as with figs as well. So these are some foods that can really impact your, 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 iron, your iron levels, as well as if you, if you want to do this as well, you can use beet, uh, beetroot uh, juice and carrot juice as well. That can also impact your levels too. And also, if you also impact it too as well, you can even use what is called molasses, blackstrap molasses. You can take about a tablespoon of blackstrap molasses. Um, you can do that twice a day in a cup of water. Um, and that blackstrap molasses can actually impact your iron levels. And, uh, and even then too, uh, you can utilize this on a regular basis and to see the impact and get regular checks to see how your iron levels have been impacted. And even, even for cleansing your lymph system and so forth, um, one of the best ways to do that is through exercise and movement and, and so forth, right? And I know that we come into an end here, so I just want to be able to respect the time. And I know that we have several other questions here today, but I will just hand it over to our host. And I just want to thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for... Um, Yes, thank you so much for everything and for being here today and for the opportunity to share with you. And I pray that by God's grace, that the information that have been shared, um, that have been shared is helpful to you. And, uh, and let us use it. The greatest thing is to use it, to, to, to move, to transition ourselves, transition ourselves from information to transformation, to application. Are you following this? That leads to transformation. So I wanted to be able to apply apply the principle. Somebody talked about a rebounding for lymph. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, for, we do it here all the time. People who have lymph problems, they get on a rebounder for certain times a day, and we've seen direct impact, right? So I wanted to be able to not just learn, my friends. I want to encourage us to move far past just learning to applying to your health and to your life. And I pray that by God's grace that this here has been a blessing to you, and it has as it has also to me. So thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you and for your patience as we got through this together. Praise the Lord.